Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Railify, and I hope you're having a beautiful day today. So we are going to talk about Adam Britton in this video, and there's going to be a lot of disturbing things. Uh, I'm not going to couch the language. I'm not going to censor it. Band, 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 band. Gone forever. Adam Britton. This was the hardest story I've had to cover, and I have covered all kinds of crimes. The first time I encountered Adam Britton, that story, it hung with me. I wore it around my neck like an albatross for quite a while. And the way I covered that story wasn't nearly as mature as what I would have liked it to have been. There was a lot of profanity, a lot of bad language. You may have noticed I've gone through my back catalog and I've erased everything off of YouTube. It's still all on Rumble if you want to see those Adam Britton videos. This, this one is the update, the new information as of July 2024, and I will cover the old information as well. So do be warned. We're going to be talking about some, some disturbing things, and I will not be couching the language. It won't be profanity I'm using, but I will be reading it as it's on here so we will be talking about things that happened to animals all right with all that said how once respected bbc zoologist adam Britton, who worked with his wife and david attenborough was exposed by online sleuths a serial animal abuser who raped and tortured dogs as he faces sentencing for his horrific Crimes in this. And that Daily Mail article is also this. Adam Britton's um, sick dog rapist condition is exposed. We find out what is wrong with him. That's new information. We also read that he gets teary eyed in court. He gets sad. He sheds a tear and needs a Kleenex, insinuating that he has a heart. I don't think he had a heart. I don't think he shed a single tear for any of those animals that he tortured to literal death. He tortured them to death. Crocodile expert who raped and tortured dog cries as he faces 249 years in prison. So a disgraced zoologist who filmed himself brutally raping and torturing dozens of pet dogs has appeared in court today ahead of sentencing for his horrific act. And this has been put off. It's been delayed and it's been delayed and it's been delayed multiple times. A lot of people have been wondering, hey, what is going on with this? The court has just, they've kept pushing it. Something has always come up. It's like they're taking baby steps with this. So Adam Britton, 53 years old, who grew up in West Yorkshire before moving to Australia, confessed in Darwin's Supreme Court last year to 63 charges relating to animal abuse, bestiality, and for the possession of child exploitation material. One of the awful things is that not only did he do all of the crimes and hurt all of the animals, he inspired and he taught others to do that as well. He was almost like a ringleader of sorts where people were doing like these monkey crush videos or whatever it is where where an animals were being crushed, dogs and monkeys and all. It, it was just like causing the most extreme pain and people somehow get off on that. It is It is alarming. The leading zoologist who has worked with the BBC and National Geographic on productions, sourced about 42 dogs on Gumtree, Australia, over a two-year period for the sole purpose of torturing them to death on camera. And the way he would do it would be really sick. Really just, oh, I'm so sad. My, my dog has passed away, and I'm really, really lonely. You, you know, if I had your dog, I, it would make me feel much better. It would ease the sorrow off my heart. And then people would go, um, okay, 
You can have my dog. You're a, you're a leading zoologist with the BBC. Of course, you'll obviously take good care of my dog. This is, this is fine. And then that dog is brutally raped and murdered and dismembered and filmed and spread across the earth for other sick people to enjoy. They go, oh, yeah, look at the way that he's harming that animal. This is fantastic. It is absolutely disgusting. So Britain would arrange to take dogs from families who were forced to give their pets up due to work or health issues and once described watching children cry as he took their beloved pets away. And that probably got him very excited, knowing I'm causing these people pain, but if they only knew what was about to happen to their dog. It's people like this that it makes you, it makes you wonder, are you born evil or do you learn evil? Do you become evil? I think the answer is both. I really do. I think you can be born evil. And I think good people can be corrupted into evil along the way. I believe Adam Britton was born evil. Britton, who once hosted David Attenborough. And it's too bad that, that Sir Attenborough's name has to be smeared all, all over this. Well, the broadcaster filmed part of the BBC's Life in Cold Blood docuseries at his property. So Britain, is who we're talking about, appeared in court for his sentencing on Thursday morning in a beige shirt. The court heard on Thursday that Britain was affected by something called paraphilia, a disorder defined as the recurrent and intense sexual fantasies, urges, or behaviors that are distressing or disabling and involve inanimate objects, children, or non-consenting adults. That is shocking. He had 30 sessions with a psychologist and has expressed remorse for his actions. Now, if this is a disorder that he has and it's recurrent, so it's, they come and then they come and they, and they, and, and they keep happening. You can't escape it. Forever, it's the, 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 these fantasies, these intense sexual fantasies, they will forever wash over you like a wave. You can't escape them. They are recurring. They, they always keep happening. Again and again and again. His remorse will only last until the next time he has an urge. That's literally how that's going to go. So the married zoologist kept his twisted double life and depraved fantasies from his wife, Erin years. Now, his wife, Erin, has basically hightailed it out of there. She's gotten the hell out of Dodge. I think she may have even changed her name. I think she might have gone to like Africa or something, but she's like, I don't want anything to do with any of this. I don't want the property. I don't want the house. I just, you know what? I'm going to take a, you know, some of this money I have and I'm going to Africa. I think that's what happened. She, she was literally she knew nothing of this, which must have been the most awful feeling. Like, imagine your entire world are just falling out from beneath you. And it's just horror. Just sheer horror. Aaron, a wildlife ranger who met Prince Harry once and helped him catch a crocodile, has since reportedly changed her surname. So you're a wildlife ranger. So you're out there protecting animals. You know, you're, you're out there. Saving animal lives. And then you find out this person that you've been married to for so long, the person that's supposed to be your person, the love of your life, is doing unspeakable, evil things to animals. That, that has to knock the wind out of you like nothing can possibly describe. When his condition, you're back in the courtroom now, when his condition was mentioned, he sniffled. Oh, sad thing. Poor thing. Well, why don't you squeal like you made all those dogs squeal? How about that? When his condition was mentioned, he sniffled and was handed a box of tissues. Britain then dabbed a tear from under his glasses. That's probably a crocodile tear. The matter was adjourned pending a psychiatric report and will return to court August 8th. So somebody remind me that this is taking place next month. 
Britain's 2.5-acre estate at McMinn's Lagoon, southeast of Darwin, is up for sale and being described as an architecturally designed family home with a resort-style swimming pool. Sounds lovely, except for the dog torture chamber that he had. Tranquility in the bush, the online listing read. Tranquility, that's it's kind of disgusting. Last week, a local spray-painted the words dog killer on the road outside the property. Britain was arrested in April 2022 after an anonymous internet user noticed a female dog in one of his online videos was wearing an orange City of Darwin leash with the slogan, Great Pets Start With You. So here's the thing, right? So he's, he's torturing these animals. He's raping them. He's, you know, doing unspeakable deeds. And he's sending these videos out everywhere. He's... Nobody knows where he's from. There's nothing to indicate what country he's in, um, the city, or, or anything, right? Except one of the eagle-eyed people watching in horror because the good guys have to watch this stuff to see if there's ever a clue. Because sometimes there is a clue. And this was the clue that narrowed it down. They started to pinpoint it because they just need something. At first, you have to find, well, what country is this? It could be anywhere in the world. There's, what, 192 countries or something in that ballpark? It could be any one of them. So they noticed the leash, a bright, a bright, like, pylon orange leash. They saw that. City of Darwin. And they're like, Darwin? That's Australia. But not just Australia. That. Tells us where in Australia. So now things got really narrowed down. And that was the start of it. Because some, some brave soul who's trying to crack this, this, this case, watching that disgusting footage, picked that clue. Oh man, God, God bless that person, by, just by, by the way. The prosecutors previously told the court he had a Telegram account which he um, was, uh, which he used to engage with like-minded people, and another which was used to disseminate images and recordings of the abuse. Using these applications, that's Telegram. The offender discussed his kill count. The prosecutor told the court. His account had 114 threads where he described how he acquired the pets and how he abused them. Britain sourced other dogs from Gumtree, Australia, from unsuspecting owners in the Darwin region. The court previously heard he built rapport with the owners and negotiated taking custody of their pets, many of whom reluctantly gave their pets away due to travel or work commitments. He would tell the pet owners on Gumtree that his old dog had died of cancer and he wanted a new family member in order to make them have pity on him and sell them their dog. If the pet owners reached out and asked Britain how their old dog was doing, he would spin a false narrative to say they were healthy and he would even send them old pictures. When in reality, their pet was already dead, long since dead, dismembered and abused and raped. And, and all kinds of footage of it happening. In one scenario, Britain sent a message to the owners of a large brown dog named Wolf to reassure them that the animal was settling in well. The prosecutor told the court that the dog Wolf had already been sexually exploited, tortured, and killed. I don't know how much a dog can, can really understand. I know my best friend, Titus, who is, who is deceased, who is above me here, he could understand a lot. He knew when I was down. He, he knew when I was happy. I mean, that, that's, I guess, pretty basic stuff. He knew when he needed to sit beside me and, you know, put a paw on my lap. So, I mean, I like to think that dogs know a, a whole heck of a lot. And dogs also know how to love unconditionally. To think about what would be going through their head when the worst thing in the entire world is happening to them. I mean, it breaks my heart. It really, like, sexually exploited, tortured, and killed. I mean, the things that that poor animal must have been feeling and thinking. I just, I, 
It's stuff like this that, that caused me to use so much profanity when I originally covered these videos. I've done a lot of maturing since then. <laughs> Following his arrest in 2022, police seized 44 items, including computers, mobile telephones. I think we call those cell phones, but whatever. We'll just go with it. Mobile telephones, cameras, external hard drives, tools, and weapons during a raid of his home. They also found 15 child abuse material files on his laptop. The details of Britain's crimes are so horrific and grotesque that the Chief Justice Michael Grant urged the public and security staff to leave the courtroom before the prosecutors outlined the facts of the case in a rare move last year. So one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm going with this article instead of the many others I've already uh, shown is because it covers a lot of the the uh, information that I have already since deleted off of YouTube. So when the, the, the prosecutor had to read all the facts, because, because everything that's being alleged has to be read into the court and needs to go on onto the record, that the judge was like, um, this is so bad, it is so vile, it's going to ruin you, it's going to wreck your brains, everyone out, we don't want you to hear about it. Not that it was censored, it was basically for their mental health, for their mental safety or whatever. And then, and then everyone came back in, which is, as this points out, it's a very rare move. It, that doesn't happen very often. So Britain would share videos and images of himself sexually exploiting the dogs on Telegram under accounts titled Monster and Cerberus, named after Dante's three-headed dog in Greek mythology who guarded the gates of hell. I guess that's kind of hell is where he's going. So ironic, maybe. I don't know the word. Prosecutors told the court in September last year he used one Telegram account to engage with like-minded people and the other, which was to use to disseminate the images and recordings of abuse. So he'd go on there, talk to people, be like, hey, listen, do you like this kind of stuff? Is this right up your alley? Well, check out my other account. That's where I got the goods. The gross, disgusting awfulness. In a message read to the court, Britain spoke about his urges to a stranger on Telegram. I had repressed it. In the last few years, I let it out again. And now I can't stop. I don't want to. His account had 114 threads where he described how he acquired the pets, how he abused them, and how he disposed of their bodies. He boasted that he would tell the pet owners that uh, his dog had died of cancer. So he would say, owner is looking for a good forever home for the beloved pooch. Make sure you offer them one, telling them you want a new family member after your old dog died from cancer. It hardly ever fails. Disgusting. Manipulative. It's like you're taking advantage of somebody's emotion. A video was eventually sent to the Northern Territory Animal Welfare Branch and passed on to police who arrested Britain April 2022. It was only two years ago that Britain was an esteemed researcher at the Charles Darwin University who attracted international recognition for his work uh, as a crocodile conservationist with his wife and business partner, Aaron. There is no suggestion whatsoever that Aaron, a biologist and a wildlife ranger who has assisted in a range of projects on sea turtles and counting crocodiles, knew anything about her husband's crimes or obsessions. She appears to have dropped his surname. She's changed her last name. National Geographic website suggests she will be on international wildlife expeditions for the next six months. And there is no mention in her bio of her, of her husband and former business partner. She's cleaned her hands of all of that stuff. So Britton grew up in England and received his PhD in zoology at the University of Bristol before moving to Australia after in 1996 to pursue his fascination with crocodiles. So he met Aaron, his future wife, and they set up a, con a, a, a consultancy company, Big Gecko, which sold footage of crocodiles to television and film directors. They worked with natural history shows with the BBC and National Geographic. Their saltwater crocodile smog became something of a celebrity in his field and appeared in two horror films. Britain was a shameless self-promoter 
and would often update his social media profiles with photos of his crocodiles, property, and media clippings. While he managed to hide his sick fantasies, one of the more disturbing photos on his public Facebook page was a post celebrating his Swiss Shepherd Bolt's first birthday in 2016. The post included a photo of Bolt as a puppy. In 2015, according to the court, started sexually abusing his own dogs in 2014. So that's, that's pretty much the story here so of all of that. The story covers the update and some of the highlights of the past. A lot of people, as this headline suggests, actually calls for his death. Raging protesters have descended on the court and called for the vile dog rapist to be handed the death penalty despite Australia abolishing executions in 1985. One local held up a placard that said death penalty for Adam Britton. A second sign read rapist, torturer, murderer. So a lot of people still, and rightly so, are hopping mad that one, this still isn't concluded yet. This saga is still ongoing. And even if he does get his 249 years, it won't be long enough. People won't be happy with 249 years. They actually want death. His torture room. It was a shipping container. He had a shipping container on his property, and inside of it, he had like, like a like a workbench, uh, some like cameras to like record it. He had like a like a like a broken like bed, it had like a dirty bloody mattress on it. It was absolutely horrific. And that's how, that's how that's how he did all all of his stuff. So yeah, a lot of people calling for the death penalty. The new main update is his psychological evaluation, his paraphilia, and the rest of it being delayed to August 8th. So now that we know it is paraphilia and and that's been read into court, now the the doctors, the psychologists, they need to effectively write a report, let the judge know, what does that mean? What does that mean for sentencing? What does that mean for everything else? Can he be rehabilitated? What is his recidivism rate going to be? Um, can he go into general population? Can Does he have to stay in a mental institution forever? Or can he go to jail? I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that need to be in that report. And so I guess we'll find out a little bit more about that August 8th. So I guess uh, stay tuned for that. Anyways, um, Adam Britton paraphilia, and allegedly felt remorse and shed a tear. Um, I don't know. Thanks for watching. These videos are always hard, but uh, not a single cuss word. So hooray for me, I guess. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. And uh, check out Rumble. You want to see my other Adam Britton videos? That are no longer on YouTube. They are on, on Rumble. Go there. Rumble.com. Third Railify. You'll find me. You'll find this handsome mug. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs>